Welcome to my basement, everybody. I've got a very special guest in the basement today, Hans DePiner, who is the co-founder and the president of Anki, which has uh, got to be one of the coolest companies on planet Earth right now. Uh, last year, they sent the Anki Overdrive to me to test out, and I had such a blast with that thing, driving my cars around with my cell phone. I got my family involved, and we were all racing and fighting with each other, and we had so much fun. And since that time, They've announced a, uh, a cool robot called uh, Cosmo, and Hans DePiner here is going to tell us a little bit about the company and uh, and Cosmo. Can you first of all, I want to hear about the the idea for it's it's one thing to build sort of remote controlled slot racing cars. It's a totally different thing to say, yeah, we want to build a robot for the family. Tell us about the building of Cosmo. Yeah. Hey, thanks uh, for having me. Yeah, so um, obviously Cosmo actually came out of Overdrive. So mm -hmm. even though Overdrive is a racing game, the underlying technology is very much robotics, and we're a robotics company. So a lot of the technologies in Overdrive, like the fact that there's a camera in it and that they can, the cars can drive on their own, a lot of those things you will find in Cosmo as well. But then we went a few steps further with Cosmo and essentially tried to figure out, could we create a real-life version of a robot which you normally only see in movies. Uh, robots like Wally, e R2-D2, Johnny Five from a real, really old movie called Short Circuit. And so we really felt like we're getting emotionally attached to robots like that in movies. And we were trying to figure out, can we create a real-life version of that? That's what Cosmo is. That's awesome. So tell me about the, uh, the building of Anki then. Are you a bunch of um, engineers and scientists at the, at the company and, and you are trying to commercialize robotics? Yeah, so definitely started out like that. So my two co-founders and I, we did our PhDs in robotics at Carnegie Mellon. So definitely uh, uh, big robot geeks, I would say. At this point, the company is uh, much, much bigger and a lot of people from very different disciplines are working on this. But really, the, the goal for us is trying to figure out how do we use robotics and artificial intelligence to create consumer products which you uh, otherwise couldn't have? Awesome. Now, there's been a lot of um, you know news and speculation about uh, artificial intelligence, and and uh, certainly there are a lot of horror stories and stuff like that circulating about where AI could could lead. How do you feel about, uh, you know, obviously you're building a business incorporating a lot of artificial intelligence, but how do you feel the world should kind of approach AI? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, I have a little bit of a different view here. I mm -hmm. think um, people shouldn't be worried too much about this. Um, there's a lot of stuff happening and it, I totally get it that if you don't see it every day, it can be kind of scary, but the truth is, we're so, so far away from anything which could ever be dangerous or so. I think the benefits in even the next 20, 30, 40 years are going to be so, so big. And the the, the dangers, I think, are, are pretty small. So I wouldn't worry too much yet about uh, uh, the doom scenarios and more try to figure out how do we embrace the technology the right way so that it helps out in the best possible way in a lot of different areas. Have you guys, are you guys, um... Uh, all lovers of things like Steven Spielberg and, and Stanley Kubrick's AI, where we had a little AI boy, a, a robot buddy. Is that is that something that Anki, in its uh, you know uh, continued evolvement, would aspire to create for humanity? Yeah, I think um, the 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 holy grail is definitely trying to figure out how do you how do you create technology which can really impact people on on a daily basis in very different areas that goes from autonomous driving to having a robot in your home which can really do useful things and um, the interesting thing is robotics is really not an industry it's more of a tool uh, which can be applied to very different industries and so we're very interested in trying to figure out where and at what point in time can we apply those tools to really make an impact is Anki you know, kind of solely sort of looking at robotics as its core, you know, growth sector, or do you, are you guys involved in other types of, you know, software development or other kinds of technology, uh, you know, and, and commercialization around technology? Yeah. Yeah, no, at its core, we're definitely a robotics and AI company, and that's what we're almost exclusively focused on. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to make a consumer product, 
you have a lot of different types of technology happening uh, from manufacturing to, I don't know, mobile software development and UI and UX and game design and all those things. But I would say they're all sort of peripheral to the core, which is the robotics and AI, and we're always going to be focused on that. That's amazing. Well, that was one of the things that really impressed me about Overdrive. It felt like it had been created by game designers. It was really <laughs> slick. The whole UI, the uh, the experience of controlling the vehicles just felt so uh, organic and fluid and fun and accessible. And I guess you must have teams of people that are like explicitly focused on that kind of development there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, first, thank you. And um, yeah, there is definitely, a, aside from the technology, a huge team of people, game designers, artists, and so forth, who are user experience designers who are thinking about all the minute details on um, uh, how uh, a product like Overdrive should feel when you start playing with it on day one, how should it feel when you're three weeks or four months into the product. So a lot of work goes into that. It's not just robotics work. It's a lot of, uh, a lot of other stuff as well. How was uh, Overdrive kind of received in the marketplace? I know that uh, you know, in and amongst the uh, the gaming crowd and and a lot of my friends across the the industry, there was uh, I think a, a real love and a fervor for for the product. But was it something that you know regular folks were getting into? Was it was it a a commercial success for you guys? Yeah, absolutely, huge success. Um, uh, it's been out for a little bit now, and I think last year I forgot the exact numbers, but. Um, we had two of the uh, the best selling uh, entertainment products in the in the U.S. One of them was Overdrive, the other one was Cosmo. So both of them are are doing exceptionally well. That's amazing! Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Was that something that you can't really predict? That right? You know, I, even in my business in the TV space, it's really hard to kind of be the only one sometimes, right? So, how do you know if it's going to connect with people? Yeah, uh, hard. it's a tough one. Um, the truth is you don't know. It's yeah. just as you said. No, you don't know, but um, you also can't spend four or five years of development without testing things. Yeah. So um, in the beginning, we didn't know at all. So that was a gut call, both on Cosmo and on Overdrive. But then, let's say within a year or so, you get to a point where you you can start testing things. And then, so at the point when we launched the product, we were pretty sure it's going to work, but we didn't know how well it's going to work yet. Awesome. So what? let's talk about Overdrive here for a second, then we'll move uh, on to Cosmo. But w what are your sort of extended plans for Overdrive? I know that you can just keep, you know, buying track pieces and building a more elaborate kind of racing environment. But are you guys going to, and it works with smartphones and stuff, is there sort of any other, I don't know, living room type applications? Are we going to see this thing working on Apple TV or... I, 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 take us through sort of the next 12 months or two years of, uh, of overdrive. Yeah, I mean, you could definitely imagine uh, things like you said, should this at some point work on a console, on an Apple TV or things like that. Yeah. It's definitely a possibility. The other thing um, uh, for overdrive, which is very true right now, we're for the first time um, uh, uh, coming out with a licensed uh, uh, product, uh, Fast and, the Fast and Furious edition. Oh, great. Was, uh, a really, it was a lot of work, but it was it's very very exciting, and so that uh, uh, coming out very soon is uh, really exciting and a lot of work uh, to make it work. And um, uh, the the tests have gone super super well, so that's definitely something I see in the future of Overdrive. Trying to figure out um, what are the really interesting pieces of of IP um, Overdrive would work well together, and we're pretty selective uh, about uh, which ones we would go with, yep. but. And Furious was such a phenomenal uh, uh, product market fit um, that we were very excited when uh, Universal approached us. That's amazing. Do you want a couple of ideas? I'm sure you guys have probably thought of these, but uh, I would love a oh, James yeah. a yeah. James Bond Overdrive uh, set. That would be incredible nice. with all the James Bond cars. Yep, and, I'll, I'll remember. And, and if it has Batman on it, I'm getting it. So if there's any, <laughs> if you've got any any uh, connections to DC Comics. Please get to work on that right away. I think that'd be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. So we can expect to see more licensed stuff. Could we see any crossover the other way? Could we see people licensing some of your overdrive technology and maybe, uh, I don't know, putting some of the vehicles that you guys have crafted because you've built stories and characters and stuff around this. Could we maybe see them in Rocket League or something like that? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely possible because the technology is really robust and it does transfer over really well. Yeah. So far, we haven't done anything like that yet. 
um, but it's more of a resource constraint on our side, as in we're so heads down in the product development of making sure Overdrive and the Fast and Furious Edition are the best possible product we can make and Cosmo is the best possible product we can make. So um, we get approached on, on um, uh, ideas like this from time to time, but so far we haven't had the time yet to do it, but definitely something which I think would be interesting. I see when I go to the toy stores, and, and uh, as you can probably tell, I go to the toy stores a lot, uh, um, yes. more and more store uh, shelf space uh, devoted to, uh, um, you know, building toys, Legos and, and uh, Meccanos and things like that, which is amazing. A lot of it is also licensed and stuff, but it seems like now that you can customize Cosmo with uh, code and sort of make the robot do lots of cool things, is that something that you guys are looking at as well with overdrive maybe the idea to customize your vehicles and and uh give them paint jobs and decals and all kinds of yep. cool things like that yeah uh, customization is uh is obviously a really big deal and we're uh, always looking into what the best ways would be to customize uh both overdrive and cosmo um you mentioned code lab for cosmo before for us on that side it's actually more of a um, we're interested more in the coding part than in the building part. Mm. Uh, I'm not saying that the building part isn't super, super important, but our core expertise is in the is in the coding side, and we feel pretty strongly that it's really important for people to get into coding and robotics as early as possible. So um, uh, I think um, all the, the the big market of of building um, uh, educational. Uh, uh, products and so forth out there is really really good we're going to be focused uh, really heavily on the coding part of that tell me now about the uh, the building of cosmo it seems like a robotics company that would have been your first idea is to kind of build a consumer grade toy robot that everybody would have uh, fallen in love with was that the case was cosmo something that you were sitting there waiting to make you kind of had to break out with something that people would start to recognize the Anki brand with, and then you introduce Cosmo? Was that kind of what happened? Yeah, it's a good question. So Cosmo wasn't the first idea. It, it did actually come after, uh, mm. after Drive, but it okay. came a long time ago. So in the fall of 2011, and we had really early prototypes of Drive at that point already. Um, we did briefly think about which product should come out first, but the truth is, something like Cosmo, we wouldn't have been able to do back then. Right. Because even now, it is there's so much technology inside of Cosmo that it's right at the edge of what can be done. And so even two years ago, we wouldn't have been able to uh, uh, release something like Cosmo. So it was the perfect second product, um, and it was just a lot of work. So four and a half years of work of a huge team of people, including the, the character team, um, which was there to create the personality of the robot, former uh, Pixar, DreamWorks, uh, uh, Lucasfilm animators and so forth. We had to build all that out. So Cosmo, I think, was the perfect uh, second product for us. I remember I'm friends with Pete Wynn, who works over there, and I remember he uh, put some Cosmo stuff up on his Facebook page, and I just flipped out. I was like, oh, my God, are you guys making this? For I love robots, and Wally yeah. is – I have a bunch of Wally characters behind me. Uh, yeah. I love that kind of thing. Are, is that where you guys sort of tapped into? You went into you know Lucasfilm and Pixar and 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 got that kind of pedigree behind making Cosmo. Yeah, that's exactly right. So in the beginning, it started out with um, uh, one of my co-founders and I watching a bunch of movies, like the ones we talked about, like R two D two, like robots, like R two D two, uh, Johnny Five from Short Circuit, Wally, and so forth, and we felt that the robots we saw on a daily basis, you don't really make that kind of emotional connection with them. Right. As a, to the ones you see in a movie. And um, when we dug into the details, it turns out, not shockingly, they have huge people, huge teams sitting behind the scenes, planning out all the minute details on how those characters should behave in a movie. Mm. And so we felt, well, with a few years of time, let's say four or five years, we can probably take create the robotics technology to make a real life version. But in addition to that, we're also going to need to create essentially a movie studio within the company um, who are with people full of experts who are thinking about nothing else but how to make that uh, but into a believable character. Well, take us into what makes Cosmo special. What is it about? I mean, it's it's much more than just a toy. It's a it's a true programmable robot. But why why are people falling in love with Cosmo? Yeah, I think the reason why they fall in love with Cosmo first has actually nothing to do with the robot being programmable. It's pure. That's actually something which only uh, uh, came out very recently, like mm. yesterday. 
Um, but um, the reason why they fall in love with the robot is the personality. Um, so it's really that emotional connection you can form with something which reacts to you in an intelligent way, has eyes, facial expressions, and really understands what's happening. So Cosmo, when you start playing with him, he will look at you once you introduce yourself to him. He will remember you by your name, and then he will remember all the things you do with him, the games you play with him, whether you win or lose. He's actually kind of a sore loser, so um, when he loses, he is a kind of an unhappy robot, I guess. Um, uh, but all those uh, all those little qualities in the end, especially because the form factor is so small, uh, turn out to be endearing, and people really on, on a very deep level connect with Cosmo. I would actually say very much the way people connect with a pet, a dog. Yeah. Or a pet. Are, are people starting to build YouTube sitcoms with uh, it's Cosmo and me and making their own theme songs and stuff like that? <laughs> is, that is that starting to happen? Oh yeah, oh yeah. We have a, <laughs> uh, a really enthusiastic people who create amazing content on, on YouTube uh, with their Cosmos, yeah. I bet. How did you focus test this thing and how did you stop it from being uh, Cosmo the evil killer robot who gets angry at humans and like attacks ankles and things like that? <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, I think part of it, um, obviously we tested a lot, but in terms of the, the evil killer robot, the form factor is so small. I think one comment on YouTube probably put it best. In case Cosmo ever gets too smart, he's so small, you can just step on him. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> can be dangerous. So I think that's that probably sums it up. But yeah, we tested a lot um, for years now. Beta user testing, beta testing on the personality side, on the gameplay. Um, so yeah, definitely a lot of testing involved. Fantastic. Uh, for did, developing. Did you like, did you put Cosmo out in uh, you know in homes? Like were, were there families that agreed to test the robot out for a bunch of time and. Can you tell me a little bit about those experiences? Yeah, absolutely. So um, both we did t both tests in house here, and then obviously gave the robots out to people and families who tested uh, the robots at home. Yeah. And then we have a team of people who looks in detail over those tests to see how people react to them, and some of the really uh, uh, interesting uh, uh, stories, I guess, are coming from those beta tests. For example, I rem still remember the first time we had uh, two sisters play with Cosmo together. And um, Cosmo kept losing because in the beginning he wasn't that good at playing games. And he got really upset when he, because he constantly lost. And then one sister tells the other sister, hey, how about you let him win so that he doesn't get too upset? That's exactly the kind of emotional connection we're, we're looking for. <laughs> how do pets respond to Cosmo? Uh, I would say it varies. Some <laughs> pets are pretty excited. Other ones are uh, less excited. Yeah. <laughs> Go on YouTube, you'll you'll find a, a whole range of reactions to, to Cosmo. <laughs> that's awesome. Now, I, I, this is a robot that's going to learn, and it's it's uh, he, he's going to be able to move around independently and start. That. Like, how do you make this thing not break? How do you make it so it's got uh, you know some life in it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it's uh, quite quite similar to Overdrive. We have a really incredible engineering team here mm -hmm. who has made millions and millions of, of, of products before. And so um, uh, essentially making sure those things are more or less unbreakable is definitely a goal of both Overdrive and, and of Cosmo. And then it's just a huge amount of software. With Cosmo, it's about 1.6 million lines of code at this point, um, uh, making sure that the robot doesn't constantly get into situations where uh, you need to be worried uh, about him breaking herself. That's awesome. T tell me about Anki as a, as a company. Um, like, you guys aren't building like a Terminator army or anything like that in any nook and cranny in the space, right? There's no liquid metal exoskeletons or anything like that? No, not yet. No, not no. Yet. no. Okay. <laughs> how do you guys, uh, I mean, how do you guys sort of set up? Is it a bunch of workbenches across huge open spaces or is it everybody's in cubes or offices? How, how are you guys set up? Yeah, I think in terms of setup, we're a pretty uh, a traditional startup company. Um, if there is such a thing as a traditional startup company. So as you said, big open spaces. We have offices, but nobody has an office. So everybody just sits in uh, uh, in that big open space. And then when people need uh, a room like, like you and I right now, we're in, in one of the conference rooms here, but nobody really has an office. So you will find that kind of setup in, in, in startup companies here quite a lot. So in terms of being a company that creates consumer products and toys like this with accessible uh, robot technology, 
what are you looking for as like a path here? You you have a, a product cycle sort of planned for three, four years at a time. How does how do you kind of stay ahead of the curve? Because obviously, what happens when you have success is competitors come out of the woodwork, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I actually, yeah, I like competition. Quite frankly, I think it's a good thing. It keeps you going. Mm -hmm. um, we have a pretty detailed roadmap um, for about two to three years out. And then we have a more fuzzy, but still reasonably well-defined roadmap about four to five years out. And after that, things get really, really fuzzy because um, uh, there's a lot of external technology you can't influence. And if you plan out for too long, those plans usually don't work out in the end. So I would say the horizon to which we are able to plan out pretty well is, I would say, three to five years. What are some of the, the specific technical sort of goals or technological goals of Anki? What would you like to see happen for your company and for this product space over the next decade? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, uh, really trying to figure out how to get more robotics and AI into people's daily lives, not just have it confined to research labs at Stanford and Carnegie Mellon and so forth, but really like really getting products out there which people can use because I really think it turns out you can actually make products which are a lot better if you make use of technologies like that. So that's probably um, a really high level goal. For Cosmo, for example, we have a very specific goal which is, um, we always say, if in three years from now a family sits down and really tries to make a decision, should we buy a cat, a dog or a Cosmo? That's the, that's the high level goal and I think we're on a pretty good path to, to get there. That's amazing. Are, are you guys considering, you know, robot friends for Cosmo to create like a like a little separate robot family that, that if people wanted to go that way? Yeah, I mean, I, I can't talk about the details too much, but you you're you're thinking the right way. So it's yeah, you can imagine that that's something we would be very interested in. Yeah. How far away are we from um, uh, our own Haley Joel Osmond? Oh, uh, pretty, pretty far away. Yeah. 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 <laughs> What, what would you say? I mean, I, I hate to put you on the uh, on the hot spot here as, as somebody working and living in Silicon Valley and surrounded by the people that are dreaming up this stuff. Yes. Uh, but if you had to kind of take a shot at the dartboard, how, how many years do you think? 15. 15 years. Yeah, that's my guess. Yeah, that's not very far. No, it's, it's not that far. But um, I think what you're going to see is it's slowly building up. So it's not going to be the kind of thing which just suddenly shows up but you'll see products becoming more and more sophisticated. So it's probably not even gonna feel like a really big deal yeah. because it's more gonna be like a, a slow ramp up to that point, yeah. And I think products like Cosmo and then especially CodeLab for Cosmo are uh, 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 hopefully really helping out getting a lot of people into robotics and coding so that we can actually uh, hopefully sooner than later get to a point like that because we're definitely going to need a lot of people and uh, a lot of people's brain power to uh, to make this work now are, are you part of a larger robotics uh, sort of group um, around the world are you connecting with other people that are sort of in this this sort of technological space to sort of communicate in advance kind of uh, it's not a medium, but the movement, I guess, further. Um, and are you aware of, of things that are available today that are, are not sort of commercial applications, but uh, are mind blowing? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, th nothing formal. So there's not like a formal group or something like that. But yeah. um, um, the, the community, the robotics community and industry, if you will, is still pretty small. So you, you usually know the, the people who are, who are doing the most interesting things. And um, uh, uh, so you kind of know what's going on, but there isn't like a formal, uh, a formal setup or meeting or something like that. Yeah. Is Anki interested in doing something? I, I know that they keep um, remaking the battle bots and things like that. There are always sort of robot fighting things happening. Is Anki interested in in, uh, in getting into that space and building? I mean, you guys obviously have a bunch of experts there. Would you guys be yeah. willing to kind of <laughs> you know beef up a Cosmo and put him into the ring and see how he would do? I think we have a few people here who do this for fun in their oh. free time because we have as, yeah, we have a lot of robotics geeks here. Cosmo itself, I'm not sure whether Cosmo would make a really great battle bot, um, uh, even just in terms of the, the physical size. And uh, yeah, he's uh, not super intimidating, let's say. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, so we have Cosmo, we have Anki Overdrive. Yeah. Christmas, Christmas is coming up again this year. I don't know if you have heard about that, but it's coming again. Are, 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 are you guys planning something new to surprise us with in uh, 2017? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the obviously key things both for Overdrive there, you have already seen it, and then for Cosmo as well, is that we kind of, we, we, we say that when people buy the product, then we as a company commit to releasing new content and, and exciting applications over time, which are always working with the, with the existing hardware. And that's true for both Cosmo and Overdrive. So yeah, a lot of new stuff coming out on, on both fronts. Code Lab, the, the programming interface for beginners came out yesterday here. Um, so that's completely new. There's going to be a more advanced version coming out in the fall. And um, uh, that's only one of the things. So in general, what we do is we have about once a month uh, software releases. Some of them are smaller and then some of them are bigger. And some of the really big ones are still uh, uh, going to happen this year. So yeah, definitely lots of new stuff uh, coming out. How do you feel to hold a robot that you created in the palm of your hand there. How does that feel? Um, it's it's pretty cool. It's 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 pretty cool. I definitely ten years ago or so wouldn't have thought that uh, that would happen. But it's it's very uh, it's very exciting to hold something like that in your hand. And it's actually I would say one of those really exciting things is if you go to a store and you see a product in the box in, in an actual shelf which you made. So that's definitely one of the uh, things everybody here is very excited about. That's awesome. I, I have another suggestion for you after you make my James Bond and Batman stuff for yep. Anki Overdrive. Uh, uh, they, they used to make, they used to be a robot. I forget. I think it's Robbie the robot or something like that. Um, or Rob the robot operating buddy uh, for the Nintendo Entertainment System. And Nintendo seems like they want to keep re-releasing their old machines. Can you guys make an Anki uh, robot that you could sit beside you and like literally kick your ass at, at old video games? I think that would be awesome. Sounds awesome. I'm not sure how, how Nintendo would feel about that. But, uh, uh, yeah, that, that would be cool. <laughs> Dude, it's been it's been really, really cool to talk with you. I'm a fan of your company and I love robots. Um, you know, hopefully you guys will be able to sort of extend your relationship with Pixar and make us a, a real Wally -E one day. That would be insane. Uh, but I'll, I'm happy to play with Cosmo and and uh, and show people uh, what that robot can do and also play some more Anki Overdrive. Yeah. And, uh, you know, much success to you guys. I think you're doing some really, really cool groundbreaking work over there. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, thanks for having us. Of course. All right. You take care and, and uh, can't wait to see what you've got in store for us over the next year. Yep. Perfect. Bye bye. Thanks, Hans.